Today uh, we shall um, study the middle cranial fossa. In the previous lecture, we um, studied the boundaries and the contents and various foramina present within the anterior cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa is so named because it is butterfly shaped and it is centrally located in the cranial cavity between the anterior cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa. So um, the middle cranial fossa is formed by two bones, temporal bones on either side and in the midline sphenoid bone. Look at the boundaries of the middle cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa is butterfly shaped being bounded anterolaterally by the lesser wing of the sphenoid and lesser wing of the sphenoid we mentioned in the previous lecture and uh, medially it terminates into rounded projections which are known as anterior clenoid processes anterior clenoid processes in the midline and anteriorly the same nimbus that we mentioned and studied in the previous lecture bounds the middle cranial fossa anteriorly and medially. So limbus was a bony projection of the body of sphenoid that binds the chiasmatic sulcus which is a groove, a sulcus, a depression between the two optic canal right and this very same limbus bounds the or forms the posterior medial boundary for the anterior cranial fossa and for the middle cranial fossa it forms the anterior and medial boundary so anterolaterally we have lesser wing of sphenoid terminating into anterior cranial processes medially and anteriorly in the midline the middle cranial fossa <clears throat> is bounded by the limbus. Postural laterally on either side, <laughs> the middle cranial fossa is bounded by temporal bone. What part of temporal bone? This particular bone, part of the bone, temporal bone is known as Petrus part of the temporal bone, petrous part of the temporal bone. So the superior border of the petrous part of the temporal bone forms the postrolateral boundary of the middle cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa. Whereas Posteriorly and in the midline, that is medially, the middle cranial fossa is formed by a bony superior or upward bony projection of the sphenoid bone known as dorsum celli. Dorsum celli. Posterolaterally, the superior border of the petrous part of temporal bone and it is the same petrous part of the temporal bone that houses the internal ear, right? So this forms the postural lateral boundary on either side for the middle cranial fossa and a sharp, almost um, not sharp we, would, we should say, simply a superior projection from the body of the sphenoid forms the postromedial medial boundary for the middle cranial fossa in the midline. And this superior projection of the body of sphenoid is known as dorsum celli. Coming to the floor of the middle cranial fossa, you can see the floor is pierced by multiple foramina on either side, right? And it is important, very important for the student of anatomy to know the presence, their location and the structures that pass through these 
various foramina. Secondly, the floor of the middle cranial fossa is formed by the sphenoid and temporal bone. In the midline, it is the body of the sphenoid along with its hollow depression, cella tertica, which houses the or contains the pituitary gland. And laterally, in the floor, it is formed by the greater wing of the sphenoid and much more laterally, petrous part of the temporal bone and squamous part of the temporal bone. This was all about the borders of the middle cranial fossa. Now let's take a look at the various bony landmarks that are located within this middle cranial fossa. First of all, starting again anteriorly and in the midline with the sphenoid bone. We established earlier that here this is the location of the chiasmatic sulcus, which is a groove bounded by the two optic canals. This chiasmatic sulcus is bounded anteriorly by this bony projection, a small raised projection called limbus and this sulcus is bounded posteriorly by another very um, small inconspicuous, almost inconspicuous bony projection, raised projection. This raised projection is known as tuberculum celli. Tuberculum celli, right? And chiasmatic sulcus lies between these two bony projections. Anteriorly, the projection is called limbus, and posteriorly, the projection is labeled as tuberculum celli, right? Then, much more posteriorly in the midline, there is a superior or upward projection from the body of the sphenoid labeled as, we labeled it earlier as dorsum celli. This dorsum celli on either side you can see is leading into rounded small tubercles. These two rounded small tubercles are known as posterior clinoid processes. So yes, we have two clinoid processes, anterior clinoid process, which was rounded projection into which the lesser wing of sphenoid was terminating and two posterior clinoid processes, which are the upward or superiorly directed small rounded elevations at either ends of the dorsum celli, known as posterior clinoid processes. You can see that the middle cranial fossa is pierced by various foramina. So starting with the anterior most foramina, which are labeled as optic canals. These are present in the anteromedial parts of the middle cranial fossa, bounded by the lesser wing of the sphenoids, anterior clinoid processes and jugum celli. These two optic canals, they are providing a passageway for the optic nerves as well as ophthalmic arteries into the orbit. You know, these are the orbits. And these two optic canals, they lead into the orbit and they transmit the optic nerves and ophthalmic arteries. The two optic canals are connected by the very same chiasmatic sulcus, which or whose boundaries we discussed just before. Now let's move on to the foramina that are present much more laterally within the middle cranial fossa. <clears throat> Under the optic canal and lateral to it is 
or and superiorly uh, there is overhanging lesser wing of sphenoid which kind of obscures this foramen or fissure it's better to call it fissure because it is longer slit like uh, opening so this slit like opening which you can see pointed by me through the nib of my pen is known as superior orbital fissure it is almost obscured and covered superiorly by the lesser wing of sphenoid so just you will have to look under the lesser wing of sphenoid there you can see a slit like opening this slit like opening is known as superior orbital fissure it leads into the again into the orbit right here you can see the superior orbital fissure there next to the below to the superior orbital fissure we have a blind foramen why did i call it blind because it doesn't really open into uh, open space but rather an enclosed space we'll see that later on this foramen which is located just under the superior orbital fissure is known as foramen rotunda foramen rotunda you can see unlike these foramina which you can see are opening over the base of the skull into open space it is not op really opening into the base of the skull or into some open space rather it opens into another enclosed space known as pterygopalatine fossa so this is foramen rotundum foramen rotundum is responsible for the passage of the maxillary branch or the maxillary division of the triterminal nerve whereas the superior orbital fissure provides a passageway for oculomotor nerve trochlear nerve ophthalmic nerve which is again the first division of the triterminal nerve abducens ophthalmic veins and sympathetic fibers next to the foramen rotundum posterolateral to the foramen rotundum here we had the foramen rotundum so posterolateral to it moving in the posterolateral direction in the floor of the middle cranial fossa is another foramen this foramen opens on to the base of the skull this particular foramen is known as foramen opale it opens into the infratemporal fossa and transmits the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve as well as an artery known as accessory meningeal artery posterior lateral to foramen ovale is another small foramen which is known as foramen spinosum a very small foramen in diameter again opening along with the ovale onto the base of the skull uh into the infratemporal fossa it transmits the middle meningeal artery middle meningeal vein and a small meningeal branch of the third mandibular division of the triterminal nerve another foramen uh, you can appreciate located just adjacent to the body of the sphenoid almost at the junction where the occipital bone temporal bone and greater wing of sphenoid are seemingly uniting at their junction at the junction of these bones this foramen is present which is almost obscured in the adult life by a thin sheet of cartilage and is known as sorry um this one foramen lacerum and it is only pierced by small blood vessels this was all about the middle cranial fossa its various phenomena